Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we are going through a beginner's guide to the astrologer class. And this is how to play as a mage in Elden Ring. But just quickly, before we get any further into the video, if you're not currently subbed to the channel, make sure you do sub to turn notifications on. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get into it. When you are starting and you pick a class for a mage, I strongly recommend the Astrologer. Just because it has high stats for magic and it's very beginner friendly. Then when it comes to your keepsake, I always go with the Golden Seed. It's going to give you an extra flask and you're going to need as many flasks as you can get your hands on when you are using a mage because of the amount of focus points or FP you are going to go through. And FP or focus points is what's used to cast spells and use magic and all that stuff. And it's the blue bar at the top left of your screen. So the very first thing that I would suggest anyone to do across any class is as soon as you get out of the starting section, you make your way to Limgrave. Head north and go to the church. You should be able to see it straight away. On the south side of the church, there is a golden rune to pick that up. That's going to be incredibly helpful. Head inside the church and touch Grace so that you have unlocked that fast travel point. Then go to the north side of inside the little church and grab that smithing stone. Then make your way northeast over to the gatefront ruins. When you are there, interact with the site of Grace. That's going to allow you to get hold of your mount. Melina, one of the finger maidens, is going to give you a cutscene. And that is how that is triggered. Then another thing that I would recommend is from there, jump on your mount, go north, all the way up that path, past all the enemies and everything. As soon as you get to the top of the hill, there's going to be a little golden tree on the right hand side. Interact with that, you'll grab yourself a golden seed. That is going to be really, really helpful for any class in the game. But carry on following the path, get past the wolves, Go to the little shack on your right hand side, interact with that site of grace, grab yourself the stone sword key off the little dude that sat on top of the, I'm going to say little platforms, then go inside the shack, talk to Roderica three times, get yourself the spirit jellyfish, then straight from there what you want to do is fast travel back to the church and you're going to see a person sat on the wall, they're like a spirit, they're going to start talking to you. And what you need to do with them is interact, follow the dialogue and everything, and you're going to get not only the Lone Wolf Ashes, which is another spirit, they're very aggressive, very good companions, although they will cost FP or focus points to actually spawn in, but you'll also get the Spirit Calling Bell, which gives you the ability to call in these spirits, and that's how to get it for free because there are other ways to get your hands on it, but they are going to cost. So once you've done all of this, make sure that in the gatefront ruins you grab the map fragment. You can then also head down to the little cave sort of thing underneath the ruins. You can grab yourself that Ashes of War, and then it's all about making further progress in the game. So we have the beginning of the game out of the way, and now it's just about making progress, so what I'm going to do is give you some tips as to what you can do to further improve your mage or your astrologer class. And that would be, when you're using the golden seeds, I always start with one, then you're going to find one very early on, as we explained a little bit earlier in the video. With these golden seeds, take them to a site of grace, then what you can do is increase the amount of flasks that you are able to hold, so basically get more uses out of your flasks. When it comes to balancing, because you can change like how many charges you've got, with an astrologer you always want to make sure you have more charges for your FP rather than your health. And then in terms of stats and stuff, what you want to do with an astrologer is focus on intelligence. Intelligence is going to be the main stat that affects your ability to cast sorceries. And it's also going to give you the ability to wield weapons that are required to cast sorceries. So without intelligence, you essentially can't use a mage, or you can't build that way in the game. However, alongside intelligence, I would also focus on faith, mind, and even dexterity. And each of these stats are going to have their own sort of factors as to why they're important, 
So Faith is going to let you cast incantations and again equip weapons that are required to cast the incantations. Mind is going to let you build up the amount of focus points you have. So the higher this stat gets, the more you can cast your spells and stuff without needing to use your flasks. And then Dexterity, it's got a lot of different functions, but the one you're focusing on for a mage build is the fact that it increases your casting speed. But the tricky part now comes in with a couple of the stats, and that is when you are casting spells, as well as it using FP, it's also going to use your stamina. So you have to make sure you drop a couple of points into Endurance, because if you don't, you're going to constantly run out of stamina, and then if an enemy is too close, you don't have stamina because you've spammed it on spells, you're not going to be able to roll out of the way of attacks, and it's probably going to get you killed. But then another one is you need to put a couple of points into Vigor as well, just so that if you do get unlucky with your stamina usage and everything like that, you're not going to be one shot by any of the bosses in the game. So that's pretty much it for a starter's guide or a beginner's guide on how to build a mage. I would definitely choose Astrologer over any of the other classes in the game. One of the things you're trying to do with this is balance the amount of magic you can use, the amount of spells you can cast, leveling up all of the stats required to wield some of the better weapons for it, but at the same time as finding the spells and incantations in the game that are going to use the least amount of FP or at least be the most efficient for your character. So as well as the right stats and everything to begin with for the Astrologer, it's also got the best spell set, and it's just going to ease you into a mage class the quickest. There are other options, but I would say they're much more advanced, and the Astrologer just seems to be the better pick. But that was a look at essentially like a mage build, how to run the Astrologer, what the best class is for a mage in Elden Ring. And that's going to wrap up the video, so let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.